Hey everybody, it's Vicki at Messy Table Studio with a nice little uh, something pleasant happened today. Okay, so the last video I talked about how I couldn't decide what I was going to do about the pages, right? So I decided I would put two of uh, coffee dye papers that I'd done in the middles. So I went through and folded all the paper and then I decided that I need to be brave and use my new paper cutter. This is a picture of my new paper cutter. Um, I saw this on Nick the Booksmith's uh, video, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, and I got it, and I bought a cart just to put it on so I could roll it close to me. Of course, I walked across the room since I bought the cart. I walked across the room instead of rolling it close to me. Anyway, so um, there's really not a whole lot of assembly required for this, but I had to read the instructions, and they're not... There's not, this is it, for a machine that costs as much as it does and for what it does. <laughs> this is um, uh, very limited instruction. <laughs> so I took all the paper, these, the papers, I marked them with the pencil, put them inside here, then marked with the pencil where I wanted the uh, paper cutter to go. I went over to the paper cutter and cut the paper and look at that. All right, so here's what I'm going to show you. You're going to laugh at me. I saved all of it just to show you what a goober I am. All right, this is my... F Wait, what was the first try? This was the top of the paper because the papers were too tall. And I'm going to make a statement here, and then I'm probably going to eat my words. <coughs> Excuse me. When I put it in there, it leaves kind of this funny divot-looking thing in it when I cut it. And I was like, oh, I don't like that. Well, it doesn't matter because I cut it off. So what difference does it make? All right, so there's all the papers. One, and it was done. So then I turned it around and bolted it in. And this is the other side. This is the first pass. And it wasn't quite enough, so I shaved a little bit more off. And then the third pass, I, I had to adjust the paper a little bit more. As you can see... You can still see my pencil line, but that's because this is crooked. <laughs> what a shock, huh? All right, so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Let me take this off of here. All right, so when I did this, I stuck these inside here. I took a pencil and drew. All right, so when I drew it, see, you can see this that I cut with the scissors is not straight. The coffee dye paper inside is straight. I could shave it down a little bit more and I'm debating. I probably will because I can hardly stand it that it's sticking out. <laughs> I know. Done is better than perfectionism, but when you have a machine that costs as much as that thing did, you should get closer to perfection, right? All right, so I'll go back over them and cut them just a hair, a hair smaller at the the top and along the sides. I have to tell you, it is worth every penny I paid for it. I, I just love it. You clamp it down, you scoot another piece in to make sure this top is butted at the top. Then you have this clamped into where you want it. You screw down an arm and it holds the paper and then you release the safety thing and down it goes. Outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, how many pieces of paper is this? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty-two. There are twenty-two sheets of coffee dyed paper in here. Cool, huh? I'm not going to make these straight. I'm gonna leave these the way they are. They're just gonna have to deal with it. Aren't you? Okay. Alright, so I will put a link on Amazon, which is where I got this from. It is heavy as all get out. So if you're a single person who can't lift stuff, uh, the day that it comes, you need to find some big, strong, hefty person to help you lift it up or two lesser people to pick it up. Because <laughs> it's a beast. Um, 
and it is gorgeous. I mean, it really did do everything it says it will do. I am so shocked. So shocked. I'm very excited. It's just um, very cool. Just very cool. All right. So that's the end of this segment. Okay, so I went and cut more off the top and off the side. This is the wrong side. <laughs> Let's slide this in here and see how well we did. Da -da -da. No more showing. Da -da. Even though my cutting is, well, yep, just a hair. Well, I think that's just going to be it. It's just going to have to stay like that. It's just a, you can see it's just a tiny bit. And really, I, I don't know, do I want to chop off more angel hair coffee paper? No, I don't. So this will be the stuff inside here. So it's, oh, it's only two. Yeah, it's two in here plus this paper here. Okay, so let me address some issues or a question that I got on um, the last video about this paper. I said in the video, this is very shiny paper, and it is. It has a lovely finish on it. And yes, there is a drawback to that lovely finish. So unlike this paper, which is very absorbent, this paper will not be because it has a seal over it. So let me see if I can show you. All right. So in my comment to the person who asked the question, this is what I use so you can see it. This is a um, file for acrylic nails, a buff file to, you know, do your nails. I use this and sometimes if it's really, where is it? I can't find it. If it, oh, here it is. If something's really tough, I will use a cheap package of nail files that I bought, emery boards that I bought at Dollar Tree, or you can buy them you know, at a beauty supply store, you're going to pay more, but if that's all you have, that's all you have. So I will take this. And I will rub it on the paper like this. And then I can glue whatever I want because now I've taken off that layer of shine. That sealer. It just takes a little bit. And yes, it makes just a little bit of dust. It's no big deal. And then I will glue whatever on here. And it sticks. I mean, it does work. It's like sanding a piece of wood. So the paint will stick. And uh, some, uh, what do you call them, sealers on uh, wooden furniture requires that after you put the sealant on it, you use steel wool to buff it. And then you can put another coat. It makes it smooth and makes it so it will adhere to the wood and the next layer that you put on there when you rough it up with fine, very fine steel wool. Um, so that, this is the same concept. I just thought I'd mention that in case anybody has any more questions about the uh, glossiness of the paper, that it, it will work. Um, as I mentioned in the comment to the person who asked the question, I use PVA glue, which I think I showed in another video, and I also use uh, Fabri-Tac. I will probably not use tacky glue or glue stick in this, depends on what it is, just, you know, what I'm gluing in dictates the kind of glue I use because this paper is very slick and very shiny and very wonderful. Um, I also put in the last video the link for the company. It's, um, I think it's called Operation Reprint. It's the name of the company. You can type that into Amazon and put in their Operation Reprint junk journals. And they've got a million different themed junk journals. Um, they run, the price runs anywhere. I think the lowest one I saw was $10.99 and... I want to say the highest one was $14.99, depending on the subject matter, I think. But they have about the same amount of stuff in them, just different subject matter. And the size of the book is the same as what I got. Um, so that's 
that information so you can go look um, on Amazon and order yourself one with lots of subjects. They have, oh my gosh, there's just too many to talk about. There's, uh, I think they have one for Alice in Wonderland. They have nature ones. They have antique automobiles. They have, uh, oh, what was the other one I thought was really cool? Oh, fairies and that kind of stuff. Now, I did not find them all in a row, so you will have to scroll through and hit the next page and scroll because they seem to be interdispersed among other stuff you didn't ask for. I know. Um, did I order a new one? I can't remember if I ordered myself another one. I think I ordered another one. <laughs> not coffee, though. I can't remember. Let me look and see what I ordered. I, I, I know I ordered another one. I just don't remember what it is. Let me check and see. I know I ordered some um, ephemera, but I don't remember. It was um, vintage ephemera, because I don't I don't have a lot of vintage vintage ephemera. Oh, can this internet get any slower? <sighs> wait, 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 and hurry up and wait some more. Okay, so. Oh, yes, I did. I'll show you what I ordered. Come on. Give me the picture, people. I ordered... Come on. Scroll, 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 scroll. I ordered this one, the Industrial Grunge. It has 20 pages, and it is $10.99. Um, it says, Industrial Grunge collage paper, 20 pages, letters, and numbers for junk journals, collage, and assemblage. Um, so I did order that. So there it is right there. There's a picture of it. Sorry about the glare. There's nothing I can do about that. So there's that one. Um, and it is $10.99. So there you go. That was the cheapest one I found was $10.99. There might be a $9.99 in there, but if I remember correctly, that was some of the ephemera that I ordered. It wasn't one of the grunge book. Uh, it wasn't the Operation reprints. Okay, so... We need to get started. All right, while the video was off the last time, let me get this stuff over here. I glued the uh, cover on that. Where's my other one? Here it is. And they've been sitting under something heavy. I used uh, PVA glue to glue it. I, this is the back of the book. Remember? Okay. I had a hard time remembering. And then this is the front. Then I, because I was curious, I got out my eyelets. Wow, there's really a lot of glare in here. What's the deal? Um, I got my eyelets out. And I have some little tiny coffee looking brown ones, but this book is going to be too large for those little itty bitty things. So instead, I got the larger gold ones because I think gold will go much better with this than silver so that's those so what I did was to make sure about where to glue this on I took these and you know a lot of people will sit them right side up no I set it upside down because I needed to know the circumference of where it was going to land you know the outside edges of this it's okay to do it this way but that doesn't really tell me a heck of a lot so I want to see the upside down so I'm thinking I'm going to put one there. Let me get this all on camera. There we go. One there, here, and I will do something kind of in the middle, and then a little, a little ways, and then I will probably do another one on each end here. So I will have two, four, five, six, seven eyelets in it. I don't see any reason why to put this stuff here. It's not really necessary unless you really want to do overkill. So that's what I'm going to do for that, for the front and the back. I am not thrilled about putting eyelets in here because this is chipboard and I'm going to have to beat the daylights out of it on the other side with a hammer. It just does not go well. And these little bitty ones, Oh my gosh, I've ruined so many little bitty ones trying to get through this heavy-duty chipboard that I've given up, and these will only go in paper covers or cereal boxes, that kind of chipboard, not the commercial stuff. Alrighty, so next thing is, 
I have to measure and figure out where I'm going to put these things. Let me put this out of the way. You know, as clean as my desk was, my space is like shrinking and shrinking. <laughs> okay, so I, I would love to be able to do both of these at the same time. I don't think I'm going to be able to, but it never stopped me before. All right, so I put these here. And that's not a good idea because they don't lay flat. Let me find the bull clips are in the closet. All right, let me go get the bull clips. All right, so we're going to have to remedy that situation. I use these all the time, so I need to move these out here. I put them in a file cabinet in the closet thinking that I just don't use them often enough. Oh, I'm finding out to the contrary. All right, I'm going to put these here. And then this here lays down a little more flat than these guys. I love these things for pages. They're really not good for this. All right, so here's this. Um, I guess I need to get these back out again. So I need one to mark the holes. This one's bashed in. Let's get rid of that. You are useless. Uh, we need a ruler. Ruler. I have to see how tall this is so I can divide by two. Eight inches. <laughs> Four. Ah! What a lucky guess. What a lucky guess. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so blessed. <laughs> with a couple brain cells to rub together. All right, so um, we'll put one here because that'll be halfway. And then I will do half an inch from the bottom, half an inch from the top, half an inch for the second one, half an inch for the second one. So that'll be the two here and the two here. This one will... I guess you can't see this, can you? I'm so sorry. This will be in the middle. And then I will do I don't know. I think I need to do like three quarters of an inch. One, two, three quarters of an inch there. All right, let's lay them out and see how they look because sometimes when they're big like this, you put them and they're too close together. I've done that before. Um, uh, these two are really close together. I don't know, that might not work that close together. Let us see, says the blind man. All right, I think I might need to space these a little more. All right, so these three are fine. It's the other two. So I'm gonna do the one inch from the top, or half an inch from the top. And I think I'm gonna erase this one. And I'm going to redo, let's do the four inches. We have the half inch from the bottom, half inch from the bottom. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Uh, maybe one inch. That'll give a little more stability, I get. Wait, what? That's half to half, half to half. Uh, I don't really like the way that looks. Let's do three quarters three quarters of an inch. So move this up to here so that my brain can work. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, I think that's better. So this is a half inch from the top, three quarters. I don't care what this is. This is middle, half, half. Uh, no, is that an inch? No. No, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters. Okay, so there's that. Alrighty, uh, now we have to decide how far in it goes. 
and I don't want to run over this. So I think I've seen a lot of people do anywhere from half, from a quarter of an inch to half an inch on theirs. Yeah, something like that, half to a quarter to a half, depending on how large the book is. So let's do a smaller ruler so we have room to maneuver. This is half an inch from the edge of the board to this. So if I do a quarter of an inch, that's really going to be... Yeah, this is a half an inch. Half an inch. All right. Um, so I think a quarter of an inch might be too small. So let's see. There's half an inch. Here's one quarter. I could do it on the far side of one quarter. Oh, no, I can't because that's going to bite right into here. Okay, so I don't want it to bite into my picture. And, well, maybe I could do it this way. Put it on the edge right there. I don't really think that's a good idea either. What's halfway? What is halfway? What is halfway? <laughs> it's a half. So, so stupid. It's a quarter of an inch. <laughs> what an idiot. All right. Y'all stop laughing. Okay, so I have to use these big ones because the little bitty ones are not going to go through there. So I really have to do a quarter of an inch. They might have to butt right up next to that. I may not have a choice. No choice. I must do it this way. All right. This is not usually how I do it, but because I have the constraints of the edge here, I have to do it this way. I'll show you the other way in a second that I do it. It's a little more precise than this kind of the, this mess here. Redo this one. Make sure I got it in there really well. Okay. So usually when I'm measuring this, I don't have a lot of issue or no issues with the edge of the paper here. I will measure in half to a quarter, a quarter to half. Then I will extend these lines out, draw this down this way, and that will give me a cross of where to put the um, big bite or the um, chomper thing thing, you know, the thing. <laughs> so, I'm trying to get it so it doesn't butt right up to the paper. Well, it goes right up to the paper, just not on the paper. Let's do it this way. And then this one. Maybe I should have cut this a little thinner. Okay, sera, sera, it's done now, huh? See, that's the thing. Without mistakes, how will you ever learn what success is? All right, there we go. Bada ding. All right. Let's see what this beast can do. I don't know if I've ever done two at once. Yeah, now I know why, because it doesn't fit under here very well. Right, so. All right, here's the first one. 
and I don't care about this. This makes me no difference. All right, so I'm going to use the large, wait, I gotta switch it back. There, three eighths of an inch hole for these guys here. So what do I do? What I do is I take and eyeball it and I just kind of look where the, where it's going to line up. And then I move this so the next one won't be a guess. Ta-da! <laughs> there we go. Not too bad. It does overlap just a hair, but I'm okay with just a hair. But I just didn't want it to be like halfway through it because that looks really weird. All right, let's take this out. Or not. <laughs> Wait, it's not coming out. See, it barely goes through to the other side. So I may end up not using these. I will hammer one in and see, but I have a feeling maybe I cannot use these because this chipboard is just too stinking thick. Now I can't get it out. All right, carry on. <laughs> moving, moving, moving. Okay, and I look and I line up this. And away we go. Then I'll do the next one. Once you push this bottom measure thing up, it works very well. Everybody has their own way of doing this. I, it took me a while to figure out how to do this because I couldn't see underneath it and I didn't mark stuff and I didn't know about moving the little gauge here. And, you know, I do everything the hard way. Here. Try to get it as close to the hole, I mean the mark I made in it, as possible. And then we do the last one. And it's really important that you make sure you get rid of these after you do the book. Because one time I messed up. And I had to take this and plug a hole with it because I messed up. Put the hole in the wrong place. So save these till after you're done just to cover yourself. So I'm not going to get rid of mine. I'm just going to put them in this little cup because I am afraid. <laughs> I'm very afraid. All right, so that's that. Let me erase, whoop, 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 whoop. Let me erase this so I have no marks on my book. You can flip it over and do it on the other side, but that cardstock is much harder to erase than copy paper is. And I try to use less than, is this a number two? Yeah, it's a number two pencil. All right, so there's that. I don't think this is gonna work. But we are going to give it the old college try. You know what I mean? Yeah, look, it's distorted. So if I'm going to put these in here and then I feel it right here, I'm going to have to do something ugly in my book that does not make me happy. All right, for this part, I'm going to mute for a couple frames so that you don't have to hear me banging the daylights out of it. Okay, so 
I did not get some of them in as lovely as I would have liked. So what I do is I go back and I hammer them with the nail. I mean hammer them with the nail. <sighs> hammer them with my ball peen. Then I have these jewelry files, metal files, that when I used to make um, jewelry, I saved these to do spurs on metal. And I go back through here and I ram it through the hole and force some of those things that are up that have not completely gone down and poke them through so that the hole is clear and you can't see any of the little metal pieces because that will rub on your string, wax or otherwise. Like this one has a, you can see this one. See that, that silver, I mean that gold part, that has to go. This, so I take this and I try to make sure that I bend it out the other way. I just go through here with my file. And make sure they're sticking up on this side. And then I'm gonna beat the daylights out of them. Okay, so I smoothed around the edges in here so that my string does not, or my cord, let me do a little bit more, so my cord doesn't get hung up on the metal. And you try to smooth it off. Now this would not be happening had I used a cereal box or some other kind of much thinner chipboard than this, but I like the heavy duty stuff. I just need to buy bigger things to put in it. All right, so after this, where's my paper? Um, did I put it in here? My cards? Yes, my cardstock. All right, so I have a piece of leftover cardstock I put in my project envelope here. And over Christmas, I got this. This is a hole punch. And I got this thing specifically for this kind of project. Come on. There we go. Because... You're also going to have paper that rubs on here, so this is what I do. I'm going to take the PVA glue and clear the hole there. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to glue it over each one of these. It is, you can do contrasting paper, you can do paper that's exactly the same as what you have here. And I put it over this so that, in hopes, and it does show the ring a little bit, but it's not as bad as not doing anything. So I'm going to put the little hole guard down there. Or you can use, um, where are they? Well, rot. I had them here a minute ago. Okay, stuff just gets up and walks off. Or you can buy these reinforcement holes, labels, things, my bobbies, <laughs> thing my bobbies, and paint them because they're basically sticky paper. Where's the end? You can take this. They're slick. And you can put it over the hole and then you can paint it. Now, you'll have to rough this up with something because this is very glossy, shiny stuff. I, I imagine you can get most anything you want out of this kind of stuff. Um, but I prefer to kind of camouflage it with this. Although, you know, you can still see it. But once it's in the, once the papers are in the book, it's a little harder to see. All right, let me get these done and then I'll be right back. Okay, so you can't see anything from the front and once the paper is in there and you flip the pages, this will not be obvious anymore. Um, it does help a little bit for rubbing. Now, if you don't put eyelets in it, then you don't have to do the little circles. There's really no point, but this is to keep the metal from rubbing on, rubbing on the top page that you put in here and the bottom page that you use in there. So that's why I put them on because it helps the rub rub factor. All right, so now I have to do the other side. Now, you remember that 
the big bite is not going to go through both of these at the same time. So what I do is I put them together, make sure that they are clamped together so they don't scoot around while I do this because this is kind of an important part. Actually, it's a very important part. And then I take my pencil and I roll it around in here really dark because you're gonna poke that out so that my holes will be in the same spot as the top one. And this one's a little bit off. They're not quite even. And I'm gonna make them just as cockeyed as the first time because they gotta match. Oh, let's see, there's not enough pencil in the middle one. There we go. Hopefully that'll do it. You see the pencil marks? That's where I need to poke the holes. Hopefully this works. <laughs> and it should because I left this in the same spot. I never moved it. And I can kind of see I have to move it back again. Kind of see where it's going to go because I have not adjusted my... Oh, it scooted just a hair. Oh. That's too far back. I think I must have bumped it. All right, so let me look at this one and make sure it's the same. Got to be able to see through it. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Outstanding. So I must have put this right back where it was. Let's do the next one. As you can see, oh well, maybe you can't see. <laughs> All the holes line up, take my word for it. There you go, can you see? You can see through the hole there. there, there, there. Oh, there you go. All right, they line up, so that's good. I've made books in the past where they don't line up, what can I say? Okay, um, next thing is, I'm gonna put all these papers back into here. And then I'm going to mark these, whoops, wrong way. I'm going to mark these so that they will go, um, their, their holes and stuff will be lined up with this. When I go to sew it together, it will work. Because I've had them where I've had it been a little bit off. It looks so good. If you go to my Etsy store, you can find a lot of the other um, Coptic stitch books that I've made. I think you can find them under Perfectly Imperfect is the category. Okay, so there's this. I got them all in here. I want this to be the second one. There we go. I don't really care much about what kind of order they're in. So there they all are. And see, some of them stick up a little higher because of my cutting, not because of the new machine. And I'm, I'm going to, um, I may trim some of this down because that one sticks out. Yep, that one sticks out way too much. So let's just give it a haircut. Haircut. Uh, no, no, um, okay, just a little sliver. I don't want to make it look really bad. Mm, I'll live with it. Okay, so I don't want to mess it up. 
All right, so I'm going to take these. And I'm going to put a rubber band around them to keep them from moving. Oh, that's too much. That. I hate it when I get rubber bands and they feel old when I get them and then you're working all of a sudden and you get whapped because it snaps. I like the, what just happened there. Look at that. Dang, that's really pathetic. Ugh. And it um, hurts. Let's see. I don't think this is going to go all the way around. It's too small. Jeez, who knew looking for a rubber band was going to take so long? Oh, let's try this one. All right. I want to put these all together because I want the ends, the spines to be, oops, not that way. I want them to be perfectly matched up this way. And then I'm going to take these clips, oops, let's make sure we got them good. I want to put one here and one here. Now everybody has their own way of doing this. This may not be the way that so-and-so does it, but this is the way I do it. All right, so I'm gonna put this over here like this. And now I need to look at the end here to make sure everybody's lined up. What? Eh, look. There went another, that's, that's two. Holy moly. That's really terrible. So much for good quality, huh? Let's see if this one's gonna, nope, there goes a third one. Okay, these rubber bands are terrible. And I bought them at Walmart. That's what I get for buying rubber bands from Walmart, right? I suppose it could happen anywhere, huh? Let's see, is this one going to make it? Er, all right, let's try this once again. If you want to see a really good tutorial, go. I will leave you a, um, a link down below to Sea Lemon's site. I really like her tutorial and how to do this. Oh, my paper's peeling up on the end. Um, I like how she does it. She does it slow, and I leave it in my my file forever because sometimes if I haven't made a Coptic stitch book in a while I use it as a reference video because doing the oh, the cover let's see doing the bottom cover well anyway there's a portion of it that's a little tricky for me I can never remember how to do it so I always have to go back and look at the reference all right so let's do this I'm going to take a white pen that hopefully writes because there's this brown and I want to see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to take a little tiny ruler and I'm going to look at where my circle is and go halfway through the circle. I'm going to take my white pen and I'm going to mark down the straight line so I know where to poke my holes. You see that? So I go halfway through. So I can see it here, and I know what's on the other side because they're in the exact same spot. And then I'm going to take the white pen. I'm going to draw it on my signatures. Sometimes you miss one. I've done that before where it didn't, didn't mark it. So can you see what I'm doing? Oh, that's really bright on the camera. Cool. And I just, now if this was just plain coffee paper, I would use a pencil. But if this is so dark, I need to be able to see it. So I just use the white pen. It may or may not show up. Frankly, I really don't. Nice. I really don't care. 
I'm waiting for a package, so that's why my phone's on, because when the ring goes off, I know my package is there. What am I waiting for today? I can't remember. Oh, I'm waiting for shelf dividers from um, Walmart. They are not the speediest people in shipping. There's that. And then I do the last two. When C. Lemon does her, she lays it flat down and then she holds the ruler um, vertical and does it. I'm doing this for you because you can see what I'm doing. I try to do it the same way she does it. And then this will go halfway through here. All right, so there's all my markings. Then I take all this apart because you have to start poking holes in things. So I take this and I take my paper and I turn it this way. Wait, I get whoop, one more to open. And then I take my um, pokey tool, which I was not able to find a minute ago. I know it's in here. It's, oh, here it is. It's one of the shortest things in my pencil can. Take my pokey tool and turn this the other way. And then I just poke holes. Not rocket science, not hard. I have a, a V-shaped book thingy my husband made for me, a cradle I could use, but I'm too lazy to go get it. <laughs> and I also have another uh, We Are Memory Keepers book dilly, but Again, I'm too lazy to go get it. Okay, so there's my holes. And they should correspond with this. And I hold it up to here and I look and, uh, let's see. There's that hole, that him. Yep, pretty much fine. Okay, so my package came. Um, One thing that's really important to remember that when you do these, when you lay these out, you poke the holes, you put them back in the same order that you poked the holes and you had them stacked when you use your measure, measure blah, when you do your measuring. That's really important so that you know you haven't gotten anything out of order that will affect what it looks like or the way it goes make sure everything was exactly the way it was when you started. Let me set up a goal there. Because if it's out of order, it might mess up the continuity of your pages, everything. So when you when you do this and also when you sew them in, you sew them in, leave them stacked in the order and then take them one at a time like that. I throw these rubber bands in the trash. I don't know why I have these things. They're not that old for Pete's sake, and they're already busting. All right. All right, so I'm going to finish poking the holes in the rest of these. It's not that exciting. Look at all my little dots. They look cool. Um, I'm going to finish poking the holes in the rest of these, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished poking the holes in everything, and I'm going to put a rubber band around this to hold it. This time the husband knocked on the door. <laughs> okay, so I got it rubber banded together and you can see that most of the, the holes are lined up pretty much from where I made them. This one's a little bit off. I don't know why this one is off. Let me scoot. He might be not be scooted in here properly. Yep, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to find some thread 
that I want to use. There we go. And then um, I'm going to sew it together in the next video. <laughs> My husband is building something for me that came in the uh, delivered today and he will knock on the door a thousand times so it's easier for me to do this at night or three o'clock in the morning than it is to do it when he's, you know, around. <laughs> okay, so I will try not to make too much time gap between this video and sewing the, this together. So it'll be real quick. Thanks for watching.